What's up guys? I'm Olivia. And I'm Kyle. And we're driving and vibing. Today we are going to talk about our top 10 RV parks of 2017, so stay tuned. Welcome back to our channel everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If it's your first time here, we would love for you to subscribe and join the Vibe Tribe. So today we're going to look back on 2017 and talk about our favorite RV parks and resorts. And we have camped at over 65 locations this year, so it was super hard to decide these 10. Yeah, these are some of the ones that stuck out in our memory though, so hopefully you enjoy this list. And we'll talk about the rates on each of these parks, but keep in mind that those are just approximate rates and always subject to change with seasons or availability. Starting out at number 10 on our list is Sand Dunes Recreation in Hooper, Colorado. Sand Dunes Recreation was one of the most unique parks we stayed at this year. They offer huge pools that are fed by natural hot springs. Yeah, they had a giant family area with diving boards and food available nearby, and they had an adult only section with a bar inside. And it was super vibey. They had it entered through this nice uh, black lit tunnel, and when you went in there, the mood lighting was really cool, and I really enjoyed it just because of the vibe. Yeah, it was inside of a greenhouse, so there were so many plants and greenery, and it was just very chill and relaxed. Now the rates here start around 30 bucks. There are a few things to consider about this park. In, first and foremost is that there are no sewer connections at each individual site, but there is a dump station on property. And there are a limited number of sites available, so you should call in advance to make sure you have a spot. But if you want to explore the Great Sand Dune National Park and have awesome amenities, we really recommend Sand Dune Recreation for both of those. Number nine on our list is KOA Moab in Moab, Utah. We really enjoyed the KOA Moab because of its location to all the amazing things that the Moab area provides. And our favorite of those is Arches National Park and Canyonlands. We explored a lot in the parks, but also in the surrounding area. There's so much to see and do, trails to explore, and the downtown has a lot of great shopping and food options. Now, as with most Moab RV parks, the rate is gonna be a little pricey. This one starts around 50 bucks, and that is pretty much par for the course in Moab. And one of the other things is there is not much shade here. Yeah, this park did have a lot of trees and greenery though, which is very nice considering the area it's in, and the park was very well maintained. They also had very good Wi-Fi while we were visiting the park, enough for us to be able to use and stream with without many interruptions, so that's pretty rare to find in RV parks. But there are a few considerations, and one of those is that when we were there, there was no laundry room available. They did have some construction going on, building a new pool and the laundry room, so hopefully that will be available next season. But if you're gonna explore the Moab area and you wanna stay in an RV park, we would recommend the KOA of Moab. Number eight on our list is Leitner Creek Campground in Durango, Colorado. So if you watched our top 10 list of our favorite towns of 2017, you'll know that Durango was our favorite and Leitner Creek Campground was one of the many perks while we were there. We loved this campground because it was tucked back into the trees. There was a cute little creek running through. It was a very peaceful, quiet campground with good privacy. The park's location is great for taking day trips to Silverton, Pagosa Springs, Mesa Verde National Park. So it really has a good central location to get out and explore more of the overall area. It was also very well maintained and they had a great laundry facility. The owners were very accommodating and kind. Some things to consider when going there is some of the spaces can be a little tight. So just be aware of that going in. You should be fine if you stay towards the front of the campground. We did see a lot of large class A's and fifth wheels there, so you should be fine. And it is open seasonally, so just keep that in mind. If you want to visit during the winter season, you're going to be out of luck, but they open up for the spring and through the fall. Coming in at number seven on our list is Black Canyon Campground in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is a national forest campground, unlike the other campgrounds on our list, but we liked it so much and it was just a great place to stay in the Santa Fe area that it definitely made the list. First and foremost, we want to acknowledge that it is only 10 bucks to camp here, which is awesome in the Santa Fe area, but the vibe of the forest camping experience really resonated with us. It's located up the mountain, so it's much higher elevation, cooler up there, lots of pine trees, and it was a very nice, relaxing, peaceful vibe. With the location, 
mentioned, there is no cellular service up there. And that's one thing to consider. It kind of let us experience nature more and be disconnected. By the end of our time there, we were ready to get back connected to the internet. But other than that, there are no hookups at the site. They do have water available there and vault toilets as well. It's also very well maintained. All of the sites were very wide and paved. You shouldn't have any trouble getting level and set up. They had uh, fire pits and picnic tables available. So it was a really nice little National Forest Park. Yeah, completely. Uh, among the nicest National Forest Parks we've ever visited. But if you're going to the Santa Fe area and you don't want to stay at an RV park, we highly recommend the Black Canyon Campground. It was very busy when we were there though and barely found a spot. So I would have a plan B available just in case it is full. Coming in at number six on our list is Sam's Family Spa in Desert Hot Springs, California. This is where we are camped currently. We always end up here around Christmas each year. It just happens to be a great place after we visit with family in LA for Thanksgiving. And it's a nice place to kind of unwind for a while. Now the nightly rate here starts around 50 bucks. But if you stay a month like we do, we're only gonna be paying 575 bucks, which really discounts that nightly rate. And it has been a great resting point, like Olivia said, especially between the holidays and then going to Quartzsite. It's a very low key park and very relaxed. Our favorite thing is the natural hot springs they have here. They have four different tubs with varying temperatures and some nice pools too. The pools are by far my favorite part here, but the staff here and everyone is just super laid back. So it's a really low stress environment. Some things to consider are some of the sites are pretty close together and you don't have much privacy and it can get really windy out here. And I did forget to add that they have great Wi-Fi. So that is a new thing they added. It's free Wi-Fi this year and we've been able to stream with it even. So two thumbs up for that. Next on our list is Paradise by the Sea in Oceanside, California. So Oceanside is one of the biggest cities we camped in this year, but Paradise by the Sea did not feel that way at all. It was located just a block from the Pacific Ocean and along this little lagoon, so we really enjoyed it there. Yeah, they had a walking path straight to the ocean. There was this big, beautiful green city park nearby and like a little lagoon running next to the park so you could see all the ducks. It was a really nice vibe and the park was so well maintained and had lots of cool amenities as well. So it's located close enough to San Diego and Carlsbad so you can make easy day trips to those locations. Inside the park they have pools available, they have a fun little fire pit area where we went and hung out at night and just enjoyed the night sky. A few things to consider about Paradise by the Sea is that the spots are close together and this is kind of a common theme that we found in really urban camping areas. It's also going to be a little bit pricier here because you are paying for the location, which is going to be very common amongst all of the RV parks right near the ocean there. So it starts out at around $70 a night. Overall, if you're going to the Oceanside, San Diego, Carlsbad area, Paradise by the Sea is a great place to stay. Coming in at number four is Stella Mare RV Resort in Galveston, Texas. This park is right by the ocean. It was very beautiful and maintained. They had nice big level sites. Any size rig can fit in there. And it's just a short drive to Galveston. Yeah, uh, we were blown away whenever we entered this park. I believe it's brand new, maybe just a year old. The sites are pristine and their laundry room is in great condition. Their pools, it is all brand new and beautiful. We went to downtown Galveston for the day and walked around. We had lunch and just explored all the little shops. It was very cute and fun. And we loved that it was just a short little drive to the ocean and you get to drive along the seawall and just watch the waves crash in. And it was just really pretty. And on site, they have pools available and different things to do in the park. So the approximate starting rate is around 55 bucks, which is a little pricey, but as far as being on Galveston Island, that's pretty much the norm. And there are a few things to consider, and one of them is the laundry room. The laundry rooms were located upstairs in the restroom area, but they did have some construction going on in another area of the park, so I don't know if they will be changing that layout and facility at all. And the restrooms that it's located in are beautiful. So it wasn't that it was in the bathroom. It was just that we couldn't work on laundry together. Whoever committed to the laundry, you know, you're kind of committed to that because it's either the male or the female bathroom. Number three on our list is Mountain Valley RV Resort in Heber City, Utah.
Mountain Valley RV Resort was a beautiful site with the largest pull-throughs we have ever seen in our life. <laughs> They had some really huge sites. The park was immaculately maintained, all of the restrooms. They had great pool areas that we visited every night. They even had an adult-only pool area where you had to be 21 or over to go to, and also a family-friendly pool area. So depending what you're looking for, you can find that at either pool. The community buildings were great too with workout rooms, uh, pool tables, and huge TVs. This was a great park to explore uh, Sundance and Park City nearby. We went on a great hiking trail to a waterfall and just the whole area was so beautiful. It was the first time we had ever visited Northern Utah, so it was a great to really experience it. And it is located close enough to Salt Lake City to make an easy day trip there. We also even went on a little further of a ride and hiked Mirror Lake, which was very fun. As far as considerations are concerned, there are no considerations except the price. You know, it's about 45 bucks starting, so it's a little Steep, but otherwise it is an amazing park. Yeah, for the amenities and how nice the park is, that's a steal. So coming in at number two on our list is Catherine's Landing in Hot Springs, Arkansas. This park starts out at around $50 a night, but it has waterfront views where you can rent kayaks and go exploring, and it's just a short drive from downtown Hot Springs, Arkansas, where you can go visit the bathhouses and explore just the history there, which yeah. is really cool. And the water that it's located on is just this very peaceful water. We walked down there at evenings or mornings and fog would be coming off of it. You can rent pontoon boats. They even have zip lines there available. Another cool thing about this park is they had beehives hives that they maintained far out in the woods surrounding the park to help repopulate the bee colony in the area. They have disc golf at the park, hiking trails. I feel like we could go on and on listing all the amenities here. But honestly, one of my favorite things about this area is that our favorite pizza place is located right in town. If you visit Hot Springs, go visit DeLuca's and have a slice of pizza for us because it was our number one pie that we have ever had. And as far as considerations go, again, this is another park where we have no considerations because everything about it we really loved. Their starting rate is about 50 bucks, so again, a little pricey, but if you stay for a week or a month, it's gonna bring that rate down. Coming in at number one on our list for the best RV parks of 2017 is Flying Flags RV Resort in Buellton, California. This park starts out at around $55 a night, but you're getting the full resort experience. Of every RV resort we've traveled to, this is the most epic of all of them <laughs> as far as the multiple pools, the multiple hot tubs, the grounds. I feel like it's a luxury hotel staying here. It is such a huge park too. They have tons of RV sites to choose from. They have vintage trailers you can rent out. They have tents, cabins, glamping tents, all of the above. And one of the best parts about it is the communal area they have at the front with these humongous propane fire pits that set the perfect vibe. They have lights hanging from the trees. They even have a dining facility on site. We did not try it though. Yeah, the seating is located right outside of the office and restaurant area. I think they do barbecue or something like that there. Uh, while we were there, they were uh, streaming movies and had movie nights with Christmas movies playing. It was just a really fun area. There's so many pools like Kyle said I think there was like at least three different pools on site and tons of games and stuff to do too and as far as office site goes it is wine country so there are so many vineyards available to tour and taste and then right down the road is also Solvang which is a Danish architecture community we also took a trip to Los Olivos and we had a wine tasting and explored all the little shops there. So there's a lot to do in the area. When we arrived at this park and uh, folks saw our photos, they were like, oh my gosh, that was the first park we ever went to. It's our favorite ever. And we quickly found out why. The company that manages Flying Flags RV Resort is called Highway West Vacations. And they have really sprung up in the RV world as starting to create these great resorts mm -hmm. across the country. So even I would recommend checking out Highway West to see their 
their other resorts. They have hosted us a few times across the country now and every park we have stayed at has been so beautiful and nice. One of the only considerations we would keep in mind about this park is we did get set up in a pull through site that was under a tree with some very large acorns and they can be pretty loud. So if you have a thin roof like we do, you might wanna choose a site under a different tree. <laughs> yeah, but overall for what you're paying, you're getting every cent worth because it is the highest end RV resort we have ever visited. So definitely check it out if you're in the area. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please give it a big thumbs up and we would love to hear your favorite parks and resorts that you have visited and leave that in the comments below for us. For sure, because these RV parks are only the ones that we've traveled to this year and we are always looking to find out some new amazing RV parks out there. If you guys wanna check out any of our other top 10 lists, just click the link above or in the description to see those and we will put a link to the blog post with all of these different sites in it so you can get more information. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember click that subscribe button and join the vibe tribe and we'll see y'all next time. Bye guys.